Well, I, I know that Storm is probably feeling a little bit more uncomfortable now, considering how that Odin game played out, but hopefully this time around in the picks and bans, things can go a little bit more in the way of Sword Gaming if they want to try and bounce back and answer the first victory that fell the way of Astral Authority. Well, Sword Gaming are going to pick that first pick on the order side, trying to dictate the strategy and the pacing of the game with this idea, but it's still going to be an Odin ban. Really worried about Wolves potentially locking this in and wolves is certainly always considered a threat especially by the probably the entirety of the console scene nobody wants to deal with wolves as odin it seems as though nobody wanted to deal with his loki either but source still had to try and find a way against that and i, I do really like the the standard scotty and zeus bands though immediately just sort of trying to remove as much aoe control as possible zeus and banned away from astral authority not going to have that available is Caden, but We'll see what he elects to go for instead. Kabraken is available. Shanga is one of these picks that it's not necessarily a go-to pick, but if you've been practicing with it, it could really throw off your opposition. And with the Medusa being locked in on first pick for Soar, that, that does leave open the Kabraken for the side of Astral Authority. There is possibility for that Changa, but there's also the issue that First picking a Medusa, that, that's a flex possibility, but it, it gives Astral a lot of opportunity. And there it is, the Emir, which we saw Wolves on yesterday, and a Kabraken already two walls to be a complete and total nuisance for that Medusa. What's better than one wall, Taco? Two walls, <laughs> Kabraken and Ymir, the two Bash brothers, I would say, for the Guardian roles, trying to really lock down that Hunter, as obviously having to dash, but ooh, I gotta stop myself here because the hell pick from where's, Soar. Where's the hell going? It has to be mid. It's not Michael Checo. It's, it's not, not Michael Checo's uh, hell. You don't, you don't think Zaxi could, could pull out the hell? I the mean, there's already Hunter Medusa. I don't expect Zaxi to play hell and then have Shalibur play the Medusa. I'm expecting this to go into Shalibur's hands, trying to get the heal because they have the Sylvanas available with the hell. So having double sustain options for Sword Gaming Astral Authority, trying to counter that by having the Changa. So not only having a little bit of heal for themselves, but if in range of Sword Gaming, that'll also provide a little anti-healing. Well, just about to mention the Chang'a pick here, actually. I, I feel as though Astral Authority might have gotten the better end of this already, considering how much lockdown potential they have with the Emir and the Kabraken. It's so much setup for this Chang'a ultimate, should it come raining down onto the side of Sword Gaming. Plus, the Chang'a just in general is such a problem for a god like Hell to deal with. I was going to mention that Astral Authority, with having next pick, that they could lock in Osiris, but banning away both Osiris and Bologna leads me to believe that one of these two Guardians is definitely going in the hands of Wolves. Wolves does have a very wide selection for a god pool. You never know what kind of pocket pick he could potentially pull out against the side of Sword Gaming. So I, I wouldn't rule it out entirely, but I, I do have to agree that most likely we'll be seeing... I, I would preferably like to see wolves on the Amir, but at this, I, I feel as though considering that Sword doesn't have their soul laner locked in, Wolves actually has the potential to just decide, do I want Amir or Kabraken against the matchup? A lot of flexibility for Astral Authority because they're also the last pick. So they're going to guarantee themselves that counter matchup, what they want to elect to do. And that basically has dictated the picks and bans in terms of the front line for Astral Authority with that Ratatasker locked in for Chaotic Purpose. That is going to be Brochacho and Wolves deciding who's going to get the Amir and who's going to get the Kabraken. And how do you feel about this Ratatasker pick as a whole? Hold it. How do you think it factors into the rest of Astral's draft already? It's great aggression, trying to dive the back line and focus out the hell. Getting her out of the team fight as quickly as possible is something that Astral Authority are more than looking like it's going to be their process. With Changa also having the waxing moon, Ratatasker having that global ultimate knocking up the hell, it's going to be pr uh, troublesome here for Shalibur. So it, definitely positioning is probably one of the most important aspects for the side of Sword Gaming yet again, because that was the issue the other, in the in previous game, Astral Authority had to be the ones concerned about their position the whole time because of that Odin ring always being a threat. But would you say the tables have definitely turned in this situation? I would say that there's going to be a lot of tables turning, but surprisingly enough, Chalk locked in with Bastet. I was going to mention how with Hell being locked in for Shalibur, that they need more protection and peels to make sure that this sustained god will get off multiple cooldowns throughout teamfights, but Chalk and Bastet is anything but 
protection and peeling. That's going to be pure aggression from Sora as well. That That's actually a ton of aggression coming out with Daddy Rain being locked in for the side of Sora Gaming. And I, I think that that's exactly what you wanted to see, though, was that aggression in the solo lane, which, I mean, you're wishes Stormy's command, apparently. While Chalk is going to have a little bit of lane presence against one of these Guardians, but can't really stop out the Kabrakan Tremors. Ymir is going to just throw out those carpets every single time. I think Wolves is going to be pretty comfortable in game number two. <laughs> well, we'll be able to find out. All the picks and bans are in, so now we're going to have the casters to take it away in game number two. Well, Sword picked up Big Daddy Rain. We'll see how that one works out against Astral Authority. Uh, the, big deal, the big deal here is geometry, uh, or, or excuse me, walls. Ymir and Kabrakin just going to big put a big bunch of stuff in front of what Hell, Medusa, and Sylvanas want to do. Really, really good draft here from Astral Authority again. I like the Odin ban, though, right away from Soar, knowing that they were going to pick Hell from the moment this pick yep. and ban phase started. But I also like the immediate Changa in response. Kobe pretty comfortable on this god. And while, as many of you probably know, it's not my favorite god in the mid lane, I think it's a better jungle and solo necessarily it. than mid. But it's great in this matchup because of the amount of anti-heal that that Moonflower Dance does with Divine Ruin on top. We're talking 90% healing reduction whenever Changa buys Divine Ruin. Really like this pickup here for Kobe. Hell, on the other hand, I am the, I am the biggest fan of this character right now. I think she's completely underrepresented in both worlds on PC and console. The way that she's been changed is tough because she has to aim that first heal. And if she misses her teammates, neither her nor her teammate gets the heal. But if all said and done, that, that's smite, right? You gotta hit your stuff. Exactly. And the fact <laughs> that the, the Dark Stance one now goes through minions and Big gives deal. you safer wave clear. It's not the safest. You still have to walk up to the front of the wave in order to hit the entirety of it but it's safer than the old, you know, Inspire Repulse 3, where you have to be in the middle of the wave in order to clear it. Very curious, though, that Shalibur went Soul Stone instead of Sands of Time. Yeah. Hell, notorious for her mana issues and how much she needs cooldown reduction. Sands of Time fixes both of those of issues. It. And wave clear, really not that big of an issue for Hell. Oh, three on one here as Medieval in trouble early. The rotation from Wolves starting things off, bringing the support down low. Big meditation to save the life of the Tree Man. And that's going to be a big deal for Soar going forward without that med. And again, if Kovi's a different mid laner, that's a first blood. Uh, it, yeah. Stronga in the early game, not the best. It does I'm get the meditation out from Medieval in that scenario, but Wolves doesn't miss a whole lot on, on that right hand side thanks to the quick teleport. Looks like Caden and Stormy didn't even get a chance to invade the blue or the speed. So all in all, a pretty big win for Astral. Right now, Will's going to head back to that lane. Stormy and Caden here as well. And Chaotic Purpose on the right of Tasker. Now, this character is uh, not as celebrated as he once was. He still has a semi-global presence, but definitely, definitely took a shot in the foot. Without a doubt. I mean, the fact that the Acorn now it costs a little bit more to finish off in the early game, so you can't rush it quite as easily. The fact that the, the ult radius is a little bit smaller than it used to be. And, of course, that he gets a little bit less in terms of cooldown reduction on his dart whenever he hits people with his Flurry of Acorns mm -hmm. and his Acorn Blast. But all of those things combined aren't enough to make you not want to pick this character if you're looking for an early game pressure jungler with excellent rotational ability. I think that we've seen less Raditz Oscar than we should. I think that it's just one of those things where he gets nerfed and people don't want to play him for a little bit until it's time to bring him out. And then it's everyone says, oh, okay, he's still good. I don't know why we stopped playing him. It's one of those feel things. We mention all the time about how, you know, math is math, but sometimes you want to go the less DPS build because it just feels better. Yeah. I think that's the deal with Ratatasker. He feels a lot different to a lot of the players. And so, although he might have taken a slight nerf, it feels so much more. And it's going to be a while. It's going to take people like Chaotic Purpose to sort of bring him out of the dungeon and bring him back to the gameplay. I mean, he was one of the premier Ratatasker players on the console whenever Ratatasker was dominant. So, uh, you know that he's comfortable on this god. And in this game in particular, I really like the selection <laughs> because of the fact that Astral needs some pressure somewhere on the map. Guardians in the solo lane usually lose pressure, especially up against the Chalk. Kabrakin yeah. is pretty good in terms of getting pressure as a Guardian, but look at that. still a Guardian. Exactly. He's still going to be pushed under tower for the most part. Kovi in the mid lane is playing Changa. You're not getting pressure there. Transonics has a chance in that dual lane to get pressure, but that's pretty even in terms of clear. There's going to be a lot of poking back and forth there. So you need somewhere to have some sort of threat or danger, and it's going to be in the jungle with this Ratatoskr pick. I really like this. Across the way, actually, I'm a big fan of the cat. I think Bastet is one of the eight. I think she's a fantastic pick 
uh, most of the time. As long as there's no nothing that really stops dots too hard. I think that she is a fantastic general use assassin. Whereas some of the other assassins are niche or they have a specific role. Caden on this Bastet. I feel like Bastet is a you can pick her one size fits all, but we just don't see her that often. Is it just a lack of early pressure or? Yeah, it, she, brings, she brings great damage to the mid game and even the early stages of the game, but I think it's the lack of CC that hurts her more than anything else. Look at the amount of CC that Sor has. Yeah. Petrify. Knock up from Sylvanas ult. Sylvanas root, like that's it, not a whole lot. They got a slow out of two players, and right now for Chacho, he got a good nice wall to separate himself, but here's help from the team. Meditation out of the red team, and there's Caden jumping away from the ultimate out of Elbro Chacho. So everybody's got to walk away safe and sound. Yeah, exactly, and it's just no lockdown for Bro Chacho. Even with the slow coming out of the cats, that's the real big one, but I'm sure you'll see a sprint come out, a winged blade. All of a sudden, a lot of what Sora wants to do is shut down. Nice pull coming out onto Bro Chacho. Caden jumps over, avoids the freeze. Good play. Jumps on back. Damage still taken down onto Ymir. No wall available, but Shalibur and friends not willing to go that deep. Kovi and Astral now on the offensive. Looking for Shalibur. Good stun. Gets beats out. Not enough. KP first on the board. Astral with the first blood. And what do you know? The problem? The lack of mana for Shalibur there, just yes. not enough in order to get away. Could have used that extra movement speed from the Inspire, but just doesn't have enough mana to get his cooldowns off. Ends up in a first blood there for Astral. Yeah, it's really unfortunate for Hell. Again, mid laners that, in general, mages don't want to be behind. But And again, this is one of those things that Ratatoskr excels at. Caden doesn't have boots, but Ratatoskr doesn't need to back in order to finish off his boots, get that extra power, get that mobility. That's what allows him to catch up to Shalibur in that instance and no other assassin could have done that. Maybe a Changa. Not an assassin. Jungle. That's a mage. <sighs> titles. Titles, titles. It's a jungler. The devil's in the details, Tom. <laughs> well, the devil went down to Georgia. Okay. I, well, here, we're here at Landon. Now we're we in Georgia. We are, that's true. Welcome to High Res Studios, ladies and gentlemen. I agree with production. <laughs> Heavy boo on that one. <laughs> Listen, man, you gave me nothing. Sometimes you got to cook with what you got in the See, fridge. See, you're just not used to having someone else bring the weird lines that no one else is expecting. I'm exactly! To, I'm, I'm the weird to, guy! Exactly. Well, I'm learning. I'm, I'm trying to get weird excellent. here. Excellent. We all got to get weird. We all got to come out of left lane sometimes. Is like it that. a left field? Yeah, but I brought it back to the MOBA. Oh, uh, I see. Big stun! Did not expect that from long range. Shalibur goes down for the count, and Caden is able to bounce back. That play right there out of Astral, sometimes you just got to go with all of a sudden, surprise play. Bro, I did not expect that. He's in trouble with that Shards of Ice, but Transonics now making the rotation a little bit later than that of Zaxi, but he's the focus. Wolves locks him down. Down come the Suns as well. The pur Purification beads are good, but Caden walks into Trans as old. And Wolves get stuck by the body block out of Medieval. He gets taken down by the tower. Caden gets credit for that one. Soar. You buy in Stormy Ray's dinner. He comes in, the elbow drops for the silence. That shuts down all that shuts down Wolves' Cabracken nonsense, which saves one or two players underneath that tower. Good body blocks coming out as well to shut down Wolves. Fantastic rotation out of the solo lane for Soar. Very close there without the rotation for Stormy Rays. You're right. I think that goes even worse for Soar, but this isn't looking good early on just because the focus is on to the Hell, which is exactly what Astral want to do. If you can shut down Hell early on, it can you can really start to take off in the mid game. Now, on the other hand of that coin, though, you have to worry about no matter how much you kill Hell, eventually, just from being around the map, she's going to get gold, she's going to get experience, and eventually she will hit that breaking point where she's too tough to handle. Got to worry about that. Medieval now in trouble, stunned out by the support. On the side is Shalibur, completely controlled by a good stun out of the Changa. Stormy Rays makes it happen. Number three, and he ties it up. Caden, lead change, sword take it off. And it's Kovi again picked off two deaths back to back, which is just the worst feeling as a mid laner, yep. or really any character, when you die, <laughs> respawn, die again, because you just know you're sitting there knowing how much farm you're losing. I love how Zaxi moves over to the Gold Fury before that team fight's even over, bringing down a half HP. But Chaotic Purpose in the sky. Astral got authority. It. They snatch it out of the hands of Sword. Chaotic Purpose finds it. He knows he lost his life for it, but it doesn't matter. Big play there out of the jungler and hunter, able to seal away that objective. And look at what Wolves is doing. 
invading again, stripping away more gold and experience mm. from the opposition. And this is what this is what Astral does and how Astral find their small leads. Sora looking to punish by looking for the tier one tower. Kovi and Brochacho look to be enough. Here comes Wolves. He's playing it safe, wants to avoid any nonsense. And a Stormy looking more for the defensive kill than the offensive push. Plays it safe and doesn't go in. Really good play right now from Astral. They end up losing uh, a losing couple members there on the bottom right, and that was not a good play. That was just too far forward going into the enemy jungle with an early game Changa. And I yeah. think that, you know, you get into these habits where you're used to playing Zeus, you're used to playing Isis, and you're okay with going into the enemy jungle because you'll just out DPS them. Not the case with the Changa, and Astral need to adjust their strategies accordingly to exactly what kind of pressure they have in the mid lane. It's time for Kovi to get some alone time and farm it up a little bit before he can try and just go headlong into the opposition like that. And so last game I talked a lot, I, well, I mentioned how it's important to sort of balance the equation that is your team composition. Since they had a tanky jungler, they were allowed to go less tanky in the solo lane. Yeah. Now, one of the big things that's missing from Astral's entire uh, equation here is damage. Wolves is going to be a little bit of a hybrid. He brings damage and frontline. Chaotic Purpose is going to be that damage, but they're losing a lot of that damage from Chang'a unless she hard commits to being, being a full mage, which is generally not the right, the usual path for Chang'a. It's good poke damage, a lot of good poke damage. Oh, great pull there from Brochacho onto Brochacho underneath that tower. Now he's body blocked by the cat, but now the turnaround is here. Chaotic Purpose comes crashing down on a Caden and forces everyone back, but Medieval Doc has been on point so far with these pulls. Beautiful pull. Kovi not showing up so far, right there, very important heal. That is arguably a dead Brochacho if he does not receive that Chang'a heal. So while I'm lamenting the fact that they're lacking the damage, they're certainly going to make up for it in healing, at least sometimes. Trans getting baited a little bit here. Caden waiting for him, hovering on that dive bomb, goes in into Zaxi, knowing that he's got nowhere to go. Nice presence there from Caden, working together with Zaxi to find that solo kill. And that right there, a rare situation where Transonic's just sort of tunnel visions. You see, they have the vision. There's a ward right there that Caden walked over and Trans just did not see it. But I don't know. I think that Caden... The Kaden, entrance to the lane. I think Caden came up right underneath that Gold Fury, and that ward is just a little bit too far down. See how it's kind of tucked right. underneath that rock? I think that made it so that the ward oh. coverage didn't see Caden come up underneath that Gold Fury and sit right at that middle entrance to the duo lane. I'll give... You know what? I'll give Transonics the benefit of the doubt there. He generally has a really strong map awareness, which is what allows him to... We always mention how he has assassin-like pathing. He comes around to the backside. Uh, and in general, he's one of the hunters that can last by himself. A lot of that comes from map awareness. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one and say that the ward was just a little bit misplaced. So going back to this, where the damage is coming from from Astral, it, it's going to be Transonics overall. He's got to be the one who's going to be providing that late game damage. Chaotic Purpose is there in the early game with the Ratatasker, then the handoff to Transonics in the later stages. Which is why the Ho Yi is such an excellent pick. Your mid lane mage doesn't just bring damage, but AoE damage, and Brochacho's gonna get hit by some AoE and a Stormy Raze. Caden brings the single target, and down goes the support. Bad positioning there from Brochacho, playing that immobile Ymir, Chaotic Purpose, and the rest of the team trying to run away. Great wall oh my out of Wolves to save Kovi and Chaotic Purpose from the chase, and then Wolves just cheekily goes back the other way. Unbelievable play out of the solo. Xbox record that. Absolutely. We like to celebrate kills and big damage plays. That was a fantastic defensive play out of Wolves. That turns into two or three kills for Soar. Now, they still get the Portal Demon right here, so ultimately it's a win for the guys on Soar Gaming, but that could have been the one of the worst situations for Astral. That would have catapulted Soar at least 1,500 gold in the lead. And that's what just makes Wolves so difficult to handle is that he, he can do it all for you out of that solo lane. He can peel, he can initiate, he can play your Lokis and just, you know, assassinate the mages and the hunters all game long. Peeling, he's stealing, very, and dealing. He's so versatile. And the, the thing that impresses me the most is his farm. He, he always seems to find more farm than any other solo in the game. And that's what allows him to get away with playing things like Loki in the solo lane. He used to play a lot of Al Kuang in yep. the solo lane. That kind of stuff. You can't do that unless you can learn how to farm well and farm efficiently and safely. And Wolves can do that. Look, Stormy's 1-0-4. His team's gotten an objective like the, the the Portal Demon. And it's still Wolves right there with him. <laughs> he reminds me of, if you guys are fans of the PC scene, he reminds me of old school Zalia, where he can kind of just play whatever he wants 
and it's going to work out because he's just better than the play the other players on the map and the map at sometimes yeah. like you said he can kind of create this farm out of nowhere and and wolves it's a pleasure to watch oh. zaxi getting the better of trans trans avoids the ult drops an ult himself looking for the basics and it's transonics who comes out on top zaxi takes the early fight trans turns it around kaden trying to finish what is under started but it's too late transonic stays alive dies to the dot but ultimately takes him out. But look at what this all started. All of Sora now has to come and help, and they're the ones losing this engagement. Medieval stunned, body blocked, and knocked God. down. Chaotic Purpose picks up number seven for Astral. Kovi gives Medieval a little clap as he goes back to the base. Really strong play out of Transonics there. Zaxi had the upper hand. Yeah. He had the advantage, but I don't think he had his Aegis. He hadn't back since hitting level 12. Transonics had. The Aegis ends up making the difference. And that that right there is why Transonics is considered a top tier hunter. And even the PC players look at Trans and applaud his skill. He's in that he's in that boxing duel, and while he's he's losing the duel, he's staying cool, calm, and collected, understanding all of the tools at his disposal. He can avoid the Medusa ult with the jump. He has the Aegis available for a little bit later, and he knows he can take the fight one-on-one -on -one with an ultimate of himself. 100%. If I ask Transonics later, I don't think he was concerned in that fight whatsoever. Nah, man, I knew I had Aegis. I was good. And you know what? It's bravado for a lot of players. I'll believe Trans when he says it. Unfortunate there, Zaxi, if he's just a little bit more patient with the Petrify, I yeah. think that turns around because then Trans has to use the Aegis on the Petrify. Mm -hmm. Still is slowed from there. Doesn't isn't able to drop the ult as soon as he lands. Zaxi just waits it a little bit more, probably finds that one-on-one -on -one kill. That's the difference between these two hunters. I think Zaxi and Transonics are both top-tier hunters, but very different personalities. Yeah. Zaxi, loud, proud, not patient. Transonics, quiet, head down. We'll wait forever for you to mess up. And that's why in that scenario, Transonics gets the upper hand. Later on, Zaxi might take off because he's quicker to the punch. Chaotic Purpose comes on to Caden there with the ultimate, but a nice cleanse from Shalibur gets Caden out of danger. Didn't stop Caden from using his purification beads there, though. Didn't know if, if Shalibur was going to have his back. Yeah, big play coming out of the hell. That's what I really like to see out of these hell players. I really want to see that cleanse be used more efficiently. And right there is a perfect example of how Ultimate just used Auto Bro Chacho, knock up into the pull, where Chacho's gonna put, drop an Ultimate of his own. Zaxi the target, dashes away from Trans. Trans changes his looks to Shalibur, and now all of a sudden Soar on the backside trying to peel the Hunter. But Medieval separated and killed by Kovi. Caden trying to put some damage out on that left side mid Harpies, and he's gonna find Kovi with the chase. Top damage, cat, top dog. Mortality Wolves takes down Zaxi. Bro Chacho takes down Shalibur, Kaden's doing all that he can for his team, but it's just not enough. Three players fall to the wayside in sore jerseys. Kobe's the only casualty for Astral Authority. And the sustain is not there now for Astral with Kobe falling, but they're all still so healthy that it doesn't really matter that much. Team fight recap, look at how much more damage 36. Astral wow. did than Sora in that scenario. Yeah, such an incredible amount of more damage coming out from the guys on AA. And Kaden is... The only light in the darkest. He's doubling the amount of damage that the highest damage besides him on this team is, is doing. 6K to 12K. And that's just Caden being active, being omnipresent. He's near every single team fight. Seven, two, and two. 100% kill participation for Caden. This is what we saw on the Wheelish, but yeah. still, just not enough. I mean, that he's had a really solid showing, especially for his first land. He's looked really good. Big problem right now for Soar. Shalibur just now hit level 12. Look at his player damage. He's second from the bottom right Yeah, now. I mean, sometimes you can supplement that oh, by Kobe. being a healer, but Kobe coming on through. Big stun and the big one. That's going to deal big damage. Wolves can't catch up to Caden. They need to shut down the cat. They need to shut him down, but they can't keep up. Somehow, Soar end up not losing anybody and getting the portal demon, despite Kofi hitting four with that wow. waxing moon. Soar, that's the second time now in a row that Soar is grouped up around Kofi. They got to know that yeah. you cannot do that against Chonga. Especially in these corridors, looking for that one. Stormy Rays walks into KP and he screams his lungs out. Caden answers back by putting Cody in the ground and Transonics takes down Caden. Zaxi in the two on one, couple of basics, can't find the ricochet. Hiding in the corner, he's dead and Chaotic Purpose picks up his fifth of the game. Almost died to the Fire Giant there, but is able to dash away in time with that dart. 
Transonics, you know, he's he can play every player on the cast. He can play literally anything in that hunter role, literally yeah. including like Habwa. He'll bring, he'll bring that out at times. <laughs> but on land, I do not want to see him on Hu Yi again. No. It, they're not picking it early on. They're always picking it towards the back end of the draft. This is a this is a god that should start to get banned away in that second phase. You think so? Because at land, dude, he is so on point with this god. Look, think back to the SCL Summer Finals of season three, where he just pops off and single-handedly wins the game against the eventual world champions. Eager there, I mean, it, it, he just looks so comfortable on this god, especially at land. It, it force him to prove that he can do it on something else. He probably can, but you got to prove it still. If you ban the Ho Yi, he's bringing the Shibalanke. Fine. That's scarier. I'd rather have the Gibalanke. I would because it's less really? team fight control with this ult. Like how less team how fight many control with the Shibalanke ultimate. The Shibalanke ultimate's good for the global, and you get control for a little bit, yes. But in terms of outright zone control, which is the way Transonics has been using this ultimate, it's less valuable. Plus, the, it's a little bit less safe. His laning phase is significantly worse. Zaxi gets to be able to get a lead in that lane instead of getting soloed. You got a lot of options to deal with the Gibalanke as opposed to the Huyi. I think we see Shibalanke at least once this weekend from the Astral Authority Hunter. Right now, 19 minutes on the clock. Astral up by about five to 6,000 gold. 13 to 10, read the kills. Gold Fury started by Astral. Gonna be leashed as they look for the team fight. Ultimate out of Stormy Rays. Nox and Silence is just a couple. Caden being chased by Trans on the right side. Zaxi on the left side trying to make things happen. Transonics takes down Caden. That's the control you were talking about. Stormy in the middle of everybody from Astral Authority right now. Nowhere for him to go. Kovi notches number two for himself there. And now Astral Authority gets to turn their attentions to the Gold Fury. Listen, man, my bad. I gotta say it to Kobe. I sat here asking and questioning about the uh, damage coming out from the mid laner. He's top damage on his team. That's what Chunga does. It's sneaky damage. Nothing sneaky about this CC chain. Lot of medieval. Where you going? No, nowhere, dog. He's done. Kobe with number three. And this is exactly what happened in the last game, Tom. It's close. It's close. Soar's in the lead a little bit. And then Astro just blows it wide open. And, you know, it has to do with their composition and their team mentality. They're looking for the perfect team fight. Brochacho, not a guy that settles. You never no. settle. And Brochacho's, look at this one. Look at this one. Shalibur's going to walk into the wrong hood. Bam! Where you at? You're in crime dance. Down he goes. Kovi on top. Three kill killing spree. Brochacho adds one to the fire, taking down Zaxi. That one hurts. That not was, only, Not oh. only because you get a double kill and this opens the door for the fire giant, but because Astral sat there yes. for a good six to seven seconds, knowing exactly yep. what Stalibur and Zaxi were going to do, playing their composition beautifully yet again, using those Ymir walls. And I love the zone here coming out from Wolves and Chaotic Purpose. Just by going in the sky, you start to see the tree branches, and you see Wolves slamming those shields together, and you just say, hey, no, I thanks. don't want to be here. No, thanks. I don't want to be here. I'm walking that way. Meanwhile, in the other direction, Fire Giant goes down clean and clear. Nobody even anywhere close to stopping what's happening. Over 10K in the lead. Astral significantly in the driver's seat in this one. And we haven't called his name a whole lot this game, but he deserves a lot of praise. Bro, Chacho on this Ymir. These walls have been Ooh. phenomenal. Not only in that last little bait on the bottom right harpies, but... Just the amount of control it's bringing in this team fight, walling off Zaxi's abilities, the petrifies, the acid sprays, just keeping his carries alive and knocking down escape paths for Sword to use. Really, really strong play out of the support so far. So Shalibur here on this Hell. I, I really like the Hell pick, and it's just not being played correctly. You can see he's number three from the bottom on the player damage. And sometimes you can look at the healing done and say, all right, he's only done 6,500, but where's his healing at? Well, if you take a look, the healing at 10,000, 9,000, that's not enough healing for me to say, okay, you don't need to be doing the damage. If you're going to be playing Hell, you need to do both. He's got 500 more da or more healing done than Kovi, and Kovi's got 1,200 more damage. Exactly. L like, it's just not enough. It it's absolutely not enough out of Shalibur right now. 12,000. Normally, I'm not going to correct you, but 12K. Yes. Damn. Thank you. Like 12,000 more damage. Let that sink in, fans at home. You got to be doing both if you're going to be playing a hybrid character. It's hybrid, not plain healer. If you're playing Aphrodite, I can sort of walk away and look in the other direction. But you're playing hell. Her whole deal is you got to do both.
Brochacho again, tanking up his tower. Caden gonna jump on top of him, but a great Big waxing stun. moon again from Kovi. Chaotic Purpose combines Trans. with wolves on the right in order to pick up Medieval Trans Woo. using those suns once more. Number five for the Hunter. Oh man, putting down the cat. Fantastic play out of Transonics. The man out of New York is on a tear here, Aggro, and he just can't be contained. Level 20 right now. Both he and Wolves are already level 20 at the 23 minute mark. Left side Phoenix already done. Right side Phoenix and mid Phoenix both in a lot of trouble right now. Yeah, the enemy hunter is level 16. Yeah. And Zaxi is top of the crop. This is what Trans is able to do. Mid lane siege coming out from Astral. Stormy Rays is stunned. Stormy Rays is done. Transonics number six. And here's going to be Shalibur. He is barely alive and Kovi takes him down. Toast, zero, six, and five for the mid lane hell. Just like, as you mentioned earlier, just not working out so far. Right side, Phoenix, Toast. They're doing it. Soar they're looks doing like it. they're burnt. Astral Authority earlier, yesterday, would have backed off. They would have sat back and really looked for something else. The confidence that has gotten this team to the semifinals, they walk right into the throne room, understanding that they have the control, the power, the damage, and just the audacity to take the win in game number two. It, again, it's the same story. It's close, it's close. Caden is carrying Soar along with Medieval. I think those two have been the real shining yeah. points. And those are the two who are here at their first land. Both of those guys look really good in the early game, but then Astral just wins one team fight and all of a sudden it's all over. They just go from zero to a million. Yeah. And all of a sudden the game is just completely over. Man, I, Chalibur just has to pick it up. This is really, not entirely his fault, but when it comes down to sure. it, Shalibur is definitely the odd man out. Caden is playing two players worth of damage, and Shalibur's just coming up short. I mean, that's true. For me, I, I think I'd like to see Stormy on a later game warrior. I mean, what, what have we seen him on? Odin and, and Chalk. And his early game has been pretty good, but Wolves is known for just farming it up, farming it up, and then just destroying you in the mid to late game. Give Stormy a chance to do the same, and maybe that then Soar can have the same sort of team fight presence that Wolves is having later on. Where's the Osiris? Where are the characters that we saw Stormy bring his team to the semis with? Well, Osiris is still that early game god, right? Like it, it, Clearly, Soar is not able to get a big enough lead in the early game. Clearly, if they're drafting for the early game, it's working for a little bit, and then Astro takes one mid-game team fight and it's over. So I think it's time to give Soar some more mid-game tools to try and fight back against that eventual explosion from Astral Authority. Really interested, really interested to see if that's the direction that they actually opt to go in. Yeah, or they could just go all early game, say, screw the mid to late game, we're just gonna try and get 10K in the first 14 minutes and just go for broke there. Because again, clearly the mid game is not working out. That's dangerous. Right you gotta do, you have to change something. You can't keep sprinkling a little bit here and sprinkling a little bit there. That was their first two drafts and they're 0-2 thus far. So something has to change. Just a matter of which direction Soar wants to go. It's a best of five, which means we have one more game or at least one more game. Certainly want to stretch that even more as Soar, but can they? Let's ask the experts. Thanks so much, F. Dot. And totally, I, I just can't bring it up enough. It's it's just like Agro mentioned. The early game is looking absolutely phenomenal on the side of Sword Gaming. But then out of nowhere, Astral Authority will just get the one team fight, and that's all that they need every single time. And then the snowball just takes off. That's what happens when Sword drafts the damage versus the no crowd control. You know, having the Sylvanas is great, but the only thing else that they have is Chalk. You know, you have the uh, the knockup and the silence of the ultimate, but what else are you really providing for the rest of your teammates? It's going to be very important to protect Shalibur in that backline when they were playing help, but their composition didn't allow for it. Because of that, having those two early deaths, there was not much farm potential for that mid hell, two levels behind the Changa. What do you feel as though Shalibur was really trying to prioritize in that game? Because uh, Agar brought it up earlier, actually, during the cast, where he was encountering a lot of mana issues due to not opting for uh, the of time and instead going for that soul stone starter item and do, do you think that that really placed him at a massive disadvantage from the get-go there was times where he was running out of mana but i feel like the whole idea behind going the soul stone was to synergize with extra damage on caden's bastet trying to blow people up as quickly as possible there were some moments where they found the kills onto brochacho's ymir but that was all that they were really doing in the early phases you know once the mid game 
got around and that gold fury steal that clutch gold fury steal by the Ratatasker ultimate and the sons from Transonic Sus Hu Yi was just the key to making sure that Astral Authority wasn't going to get too far behind in the early game. And, and that uh, that initial steal, do you feel as though that was more so lack of execution on the side of Soar or just completely RNG by Astro? I think they leashed it a little bit too late. They allowed it to get low enough to be killed at that last second. There was just too many people on it. They got two early kills there. I think they killed Changa as well as the Kabrakan, if I'm not mistaken. And then after that point, they were able to secure it with those two ultimates. And again, you bring up the Kabrakan and that was Wolves all over and the walls even though a lot of emphasis was placed onto Brochacho they still had to ultimately try and get around these Kabrakan walls and Wolves as a player is just so mechanically adept that I, I just don't understand how Sor really had the mindset to not try and place as much emphasis onto him early on. See, I don't think it's necessarily trying to shut Wolves down in terms of picks and bans because he can play almost anything. You know, you take away Loki, he'll play the Kabrakan, but it's about getting your own picks in order for Soar. First picking the Medusa was a little bit questionable for Soar as they gave up the Kabrakan. It's a flex pick that you can't necessarily allow to go through because you have to have that tool at your disposal between the jungle, solo, and that guardian role and keep Astral Authority guessing as to where that god is going. And so if they don't want to find the end of their spring split here in game number three, what do you think needs to be the major change for the side of Soar? Uh, if you're going to go early game, actually go gods that will transition a little bit better. So for example, Stormy Rays playing the Chalk doesn't give you the same oomph that in Osiris would. Yeah. Yet again, still allowing this god to be banned in the secondary phase. So having to go into this Chalk pick and stuff, you know, Big Daddy Chalk didn't really provide the same kind of oomph that in Osiris would have. Would you prefer to see that not so, not necessarily uh, an early game soul laner pick, but would you prefer to see Stormy Rays pick up a more preferred, uh, uh, still aggressive, but transitions better into the mid and late game team fighting stage at, on the side of Soar? Oh, absolutely. I, I want to see Stormy Rays and Caden get off to a great early start, trying to shut down Wolves and trying to shut down Chaotic Purpose. Don't allow any of those speed buffs to go through. Shut down the mobility of Astral Authority, which will in turn trickle down into the mid lane. It's going to make Kobe's life a little bit more difficult as well. And that could be the one strategy that Soar needs to deploy here in this important game number three. I, I just feel as though when it came to the team fighting scenarios, Astral Authority was consistently getting the upper hand, whether it was because of the Suns. It, it just seemed as though there was a lot more synergy and cohesion between all of the members on the side of Astral Authority in comparison to Soar. Absolutely. Transonics, he was a little bit hot and cold. First was cold <laughs> because he kind of baited himself out where he took the bait. He was a little tunnel visioning against uh, the opposition. Zaxi was baiting him out really wonderfully as Caden was wrapping underneath of him. The ward did not catch that rotation, but later on, Transonics did a great job soloing Zaxi. And uh, really that, that solo kill that Transonics was able to pick up, I feel was a pretty pretty large turning point due to just the the counter rotations by soar that they tried to pull off they were just unable to make it happen and that's just you have to give so much kudos to transonics for what he was able to manage in this game he didn't fall too far behind zaxi even after he found himself dying to the initial gank by kaden and i think that him playing as far back as he did when that initially happened and then still recognizing when he could aggress is such a crucial mindset for a hunter and he doesn't just think about the laning phase and just boxing potentials despite who being a relatively great boxer in those small little jungle encounters he's also thinking about the team fights this who for transonics in the second game was the last pick recognizing that there was a lot of frontline buffer here between this ymir kabraken and even the ratatasker to dive that backline that gave enough space for who to be able to get off all the damage he wanted to and he's been facing off today against zaxi but I feel as though Zaxi has just ultimately been getting put behind in comparison to Transonics, whether it's due to global gold from objectives or just a team fight scenario. What what do you think we need 
to see out of Zaxi in order to be more of a factor. I just feel like, so the first game he was playing the Uller, you know, he did the damage, but he couldn't really provide a lot for his team because of the sustain that Transonics had on the Cupid, as well as the crowd control. And then the second game, he did a little bit better with the Medusa uh, being paired up with the Sylvanas, but it didn't provide the same kind of team dynamic that the rest of Astral Authority was deploying. So I want to see not only Zaxi continue, like playing, the, let's say, the Medusa, for example, or something that's not Uller, <laughs> but also the rest of his teammates to coordinate with their Hunter to be able to synergize in these mid to late game team fights. And it's just the mid to late game team fight every single time. Astral Authority, they pick up one, and, and once they get that initial fight, it, it's very similar. It, it almost reminds me of NRG to an extent, where they find that team fight, and it's immediately just all uphill for the enemy team to try and combat and find their footing back into the game. Well, if you're not